Hi. Well, I've done it. I've broken my wrist. But it gives me a good opportunity to talk to you about how I use the Alexander Technique to respond to this injury and how I'm making it work better for me every day. So the first thing is you have to calm your system down enough that you can begin to observe. So observation is the key to making sure that you don't do anything extra to increase your pain or make it more difficult for your arm to heal. So calming down, same old approach. You want to find your sit bones. You want to let your back be supported by the back of the chair. And notice what's around you. Let yourself be still and quiet. Next, start to observe. When I first broke my arm, I could feel that my whole arm was freezing up and trying to protect myself from any movement and any more pain. So the first thing I did was scan from the top of my head, neck, shoulders down through the rest of my body to find places where I could be a little easier, particularly my shoulder and particularly my elbow, my arm and my wrist. As I continued to observe, I noticed my neck. I was holding my head still and I was even holding my breath a little bit. So once you've started to notice what you're doing, you can start to change that. So the second thing to think about is once you have the cast, now I have a lot more weight on my arm and it's protecting me by keeping my arm stiff, but I have a tendency to always either lift my shoulder or bend my elbow just a little bit, sort of holding my arm up. So what I try to do is be aware. And every time I notice that little bit of tightening, I'll let it go and release. I'll rest my arm either on my leg or I have a nice yoga block. I rest my arm there and now I can let my shoulders widen my arm lengthen, and even though it doesn't seem really possible, I can think of lengthening out my fingers, sending imaginary energy out the tips of my fingers and out my thumb. So there, there's a position that I could sit in and be very comfortable and even forget that I have a problem with my arm. Now, if I'm gonna do activities Obviously, now I'm working with my left hand most of the time. And I'm going to work on my computer for a minute. So here, I find if I can put my arm on something. So again, it's lifted up almost above my heart, which is going to help it not get swollen. But then I kind of want to peck with my one finger that works. There's no way for me to work on with all fingers. but. Here again, something to watch for. Are you working on a computer like that? Are you bringing your neck and head forward? Is your shoulder coming up? Or can you work in the most absolutely effortless way? And that would be to bring this as close as I can. And now I just have to rotate on the end of my cast and type. The other hand's going to type just fine. Another thing that I find is I need to put my glasses on. So I'm doing it with my left hand. That's a little bit more awkward. Don't forget, release my right arm. It doesn't need to do anything to help my left hand work. So I pick up my glasses. Now. I'm thinking, oh, it's hard. So I bring my head to my glasses. 
I even try to help a little with my hand, my right hand. It doesn't make any difference. Release your right hand. Let your head be free and easy, floating on top of your spine. And bring your glasses to your head. You'll get better and better at doing that with your left hand. And now you're going to let yourself be supported from the back of the chair and do whatever typing you need to. You can also audio record on a Mac. That's an easy thing. Let me just start back up. I'm going to show you how I type. Oh, don't forget, release your shoulder. Putting in my passcode. Hit up, oh, another opportunity to release my shoulder and elbow. Hit return. And now here I am on my screen. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try some dictation. Well, I think the computer can hear me just fine. But the first thing I did when I wanted to dictate was I hit function twice, up comes the microphone and I say, I want to dictate more instructions. Did you see what I did with my head? I, I assure you that does not help the computer hear me any better. So instead of bringing my head to the computer, I'm going to hit function. I'm going to let my back go back, my head go up, my spine lengthen, my arm release. Now I want to talk about using my non-dominant hand. And there the computer heard me perfectly fine, and now it has typed the ideas that I wanted to type. So one of, the, one of the things I just pointed out is that when I want to use my left hand, my right hand helps. So I have to keep telling myself, free my neck, let my spine release, and let this rest fully on whatever is supporting it. It could be a nice soft cushion, or this is great because it keeps me open and long. And then I just bend my elbow and I start to use my fingers to type. A couple more ideas. One, be patient. Be patient with yourself. And forgive your left hand if it's not your dominant hand. Not knowing what you needed to do and be patient. Pause, come back to your center, and release. One more idea that I want to share with you now, and then I'll do another video where I'm going to show you some exercises to loosen up your arm and elbow. That last idea is to keep working on an image, your inner body image. Sometimes it's called the body schema. Because not right now is probably thinking, this is broken, and I'm creating this crazy image of how that's broken and how I shouldn't move it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my left hand in ways that I could move my right hand, and I'm going to imagine my right hand moving that way, lengthening all the way out, folding back, but I'm imagining that wholeness in my arm all the way out through my fingers. So I hope that helped you a little.